Hello, I'm Mike. This is Will. We are the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. And we're bringing you issue 73 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest today. And in this issue, we finish off our paint collection from the magazine with a, a pot of Nile like oxide and Nurgle's Rot technical paints. There'll be a time code in the description if you want to skip straight to the battle report. But heading into the issue now, first up we have some background on uh, Imper the Imperial Knights. They've been mentioned in the magazine before. They're sort of noble houses who uh, pilot these large walkers, sort of miniature titans. And uh, got some background on some knights with names, the Imperial Nobility, and it's sort of a showcase of the Imperial Knight models. So we've got a Knight Valiant in the front here, and a couple of the Armager Hellglaves, the little mini ones. And we've got Canis Rex here, who's a, a sort of a named character, and with the pilot Sir Hector. And I've got some background on the different heraldry used by the, co the well, used by Codex Compliant Space Marine chapters. So you've got the different helmet colours for the different ranks. So sergeants have red helmets, veterans have white, veteran sergeant has a red and white helmet, and so on. And then the different sort of squad symbols and heraldry and that sort of thing. And here we've got the, seen this before, is the company colours, and then the different symbols for each battlefield role. And I've got some background on infiltrators, some of the new Vanguard Space Marine remnants that uh, were released with the, the Shadow Spear box, which uh, we've actually been covering. If you want to check that out, we have a playlist. Infiltrators are kind of similar to scouts sort of thing. Light infantry, reconnaissance, assassination sort of role. Uh, but obviously they're power armoured. And we've got some painted examples here, including a Silver Templars one and some Ultramines ones that were from Shadow Spear. And then there's the Incursors, who are sort of an alternate version of the Infiltrators. Their main gimmick seems to be that they have a mine they can lay, but they're very similar to Infiltrators in sort of role and uh, equipment. Uh, painting guide here, we're just going over some of the Death Guard details that have been missed in previous ones. So sort of going over some of the straps and dry brushing. Lord Feltheus's fur, leather on the cultists with Rakhar flesh. And now it's actually using our new technical paints. So Nylock Oxide is a sort of a weathered bronze or copper effect, verdigris effect. So going over some of the gold trim and stuff on the Death Guard. And also using it to paint the weird smoke and mist that comes out of uh, Lord Gangrus and uh, Typhus here. And uh, possibly some of the other models. You could probably paint the um, Playcaster's smoke effect with it as well. And then Nurgle's Rot is used to create sort of slime and puffs and unpleasantness. So here it's just going over all the weird goo and stuff that comes out of the Death Guard and painting it on the base to make it look like it's dripping everywhere. And a little bit here, just going over painting the Chaos Plasma effects that are basically the same as the Space Marine version, but with a red instead of blue. Essentially the finished look for the Death Guard. But with that over, it's on to our, we'll be on to our mission for this issue and uh, we've got some new stratagems to play with. Hopefully they'll be useful. Before we get on to our mission for this issue, we've got the new stratagems that were advertised in the video title. So we'll just go over these quickly. The Space Marines get five more they can make use of. So we've got Orbital Bombardment. There's three command points. You have to select a point visible to your Warlord. And every unit within D6 inches of that point on a 4+, plus takes D3 mortal wounds. Or 5+, plus if it's a character. And you're only in Death's Duty End. That's two command points. It essentially lets a Space Marine character who is slain fight before they die. Tactical flexibility, you can split a 10-man squad that has the combat squad's ability in half at the start of your movement phase. Flak missile is a single shot with a missile launcher, does D3 mortal wounds if you're targeting a flying unit, you get plus one to hit as well. And then finally, Auspect Scan, which uh, you can use if an enemy unit arrives within 12 inches of one of your infantry units, so that'd be at the Terminators or Law of Contagion, for example, then you can shoot at them with that infantry unit if you pay two command points, but they're at minus one to hit for doing so. Then over the page are just some examples of how those work. I won't go through those. If they come up in the game, we'll explain them then. Then the Death Guard stratagems, they also have five more. The first one takes up the whole of this first page. This is Chaos Boon. So if one of your characters uh, slays an enemy character, vehicle or monster in the fight phase, then you can pay a command point and roll 2d6 on this chart and you get whatever benefit you get. Extra range, extra movement, plus one to various characteristics. Or if you roll a 7, you can pick one. If you're on a 2 or a 12, then your character is actually slain and replaced by either a Chaos Spawn or a Demon Prince if you have a model available. Obviously, we do have a Chaos Spawn model, we do not have a Demon Prince, so in that case it would just be slain, which would be inconvenient. Then the other four, Nurgle's Rot is three command points, uh, select a character and then every unit within seven inches of it takes D3 mortal wounds on a 4+, plus, unless they have the Nurgle keyword. 
Veterans of the Long War is a fantastic stratagem. Uh, you pick a Death Guard infantry unit and you can have plus one to wound rolls for a whole phase with any weapon of any description. So that's actually really quite useful. Uh, in Grandfather's Blessings, you can spend two command points to restore D3 wounds to a wounded Death Guard infantry model, or if there are no wounded models, you can bring back one model for the unit. A bit like how the Apothecary works for the Space Marines. And finally, Blight Bombardment essentially lets every model in a Death Guard infantry unit throw a Blight Grenade. Because normally you can only throw one Blight Grenade with a unit, but this allows all of them to do so. And actually that's the example here, demonstrating that all of these five Blade Marines are throwing Blight Grenades, so that's essentially 5d6 grenade attacks. And with that we're on to our mission. So the background here, as you can see there's a map, there's a supply line, uh, but apparently because of the airspace over Corvon 2 is contested, this means that Space Marine units are having to move by road, but the Death Guard have managed to track one of their convoys and ambush them on the road between Omnus and Barakius. And there's the mission Convoy Ambush. So you can see with our battle mat we have a sort of asymmetrical deployment zones here. Space Marines start on the first of the three battle mats uh, up to the edge of it and a 12 inch wide deployment zone in the centre. And the Death Guard have this weird little horseshoe shaped deployment zone, got the measurements there specifically. And the Space Marines have to exit off this far board edge and they have to get a certain number of power off. And the armies it'd be 50, it's 50 power each with no restrictions otherwise. Uh, then we roll off, the winner decides who deploys first, they alternate deploying units, and then the Death Guard player goes first because they're ambushing, so I guess that makes sense. And Space Marines that move off the battlefield and have escaped, you only need to get a single model to the edge of the battle map to do so. Over the course of the game they get 15 or more power worth of models off the board, then they are victorious, and otherwise the Death Guard are. And they've actually got six battle rounds to do this in, which is probably going to be required given the distance they have to run. So that's it for our new stratagems and mission overview. Let's have a look at the armies and then get into the game. So here is our Space Marine force trying to escape in this mission. So we've got a battalion detachment. Leading it we have the Captain in Gravis armor and a Librarian. HQ choices, they're seven power each. In the three troops choices we have two squads of five intercessors and the scouts with camo cloaks, sniper rifles and the missile launcher. Five power each for the intercessors and six for the scouts. And then for additional choices, we have a fast attack choice, which is the land speeder with multi motor and missile launchers, that's six power. Hellblasters are a heavy support choice for eight power. And the three aggressors are an elite choice and they cost six power. Quite a lot of difficult choices to make. I tend to do a lot of debate about whether to take a battalion detachment and have to pay lots of power for lots of troops, but uh, you get more command points. Or you could take a patrol detachment and then maybe take some fast units like the bikes or the interceptors, but a lot of that stuff, you know, I mean, the bikes don't really achieve very much. They tend to just die. I mean, they can hold up units, but I, think I need to actually kill things, I think. And the interceptors are quite expensive. And there's the dreadnought as well, which again is quite expensive. And it's trying to struggle to fit it all in. Well, we'll have to see how it goes. I'm probably going to need all six turns to uh, actually get off the board. And so my warlord will be the captain of Gravis armor, as you might expect. I'm going to give him the champion of humanity warlord trait, because he's probably enough to punch Gangrus to death. And the librarian's psychic powers, I'm going to give him my of heroes and Veil of Time. Yep, so that's our 50 power of Space Marines. And here's the Death Guard army that I've made for this mission. So we have a battalion detachment with two HQ choices. We've got Lord Gangrus and the malignant plague caster. Then for mandatory troops choices, well we've actually got four, but we've got two squads of five Plague Marines, both with Power Fist and Plasma Gun on the champion, and one, the one at the front has two Blight Launchers, one behind has Plasma Gun and the Icon of Despair. And then over here we've got two squads of ten Pox Walkers. Taking them in two squads of ten rather than one squad of twenty just to make them a bit more mobile, so you can react a bit more to what the Space Marines do, because I need to hold them up less than I need to kill them, so I'm not that bothered about losing the bonus. Then for other choices, we have two fast attack. We've got one Chaos Spawn and the Mephitic Blight Hauler. Chaos Spawn mainly because I had two power left to spend. And then for heavy support, the Plague Burst Crawler, which I've actually equipped with the two Plague Spitters this time rather than the Entropy Cannons. So it can be a sort of a roving troubleshooter at the back of my lines if necessary. The Warlord will be Lord Gangrus. He's going to have Tainted Regeneration for his Warlord trait, so he regains wounds at the start of turn. And for the Playcaster Psychic Powers, we're going to go for Blades of Putrefaction and Curse of the Leper, which we haven't actually seen me use, I don't think, so that's closest enemy unit within 14 inches. We roll 7 dice every d6 that he exceeds the toughest characteristic is a mortal wound. But that is 50 power of Death Guard. And here we have our battlefield set up. So we'll just give you an overview of the whole thing. Like this, I won't go over every single piece of terrain, but this end is the Space Marine deployment zone on this road. The two white dice there mark the corners of their 12-inch white deployment zone, which extends to the end of the first battle mat. 
And the Death Guard, well, on this map, the red die here marks the corner of their extended arm of their deployment zone, which is six inches from the board edge up to the centre of the middle board. And then the same the other side, and then it comes down there, and then that line of dice there marks the extent of the larger part at the end of the board, so the space means have to cut off this far edge over here. And there we are, that's a sort of overview of the Death Guard deployment zone as a whole. Now we're off to see who, well, the winner gets to decide who deploys a unit first, and then we alternate. So I've got the yellow die here, and I've also rolled a five. I've also rolled a five, so we'll try again. Right, one and three, so... Uh, you can deploy first. Okay, so I'll deploy a unit. Yeah, my first deployment will be Lord Gangrus in the Teleportarium. So my first deployment, I'm going to put the aggressors in the front. And I will deploy the Plague Burst Crawler by these ammo boxes at the back. And my next deployment will be one of the five-man intercessor squads, just behind the aggressors. Put down a squad of plague marines over here behind the crane, so that's where they are in my deployment zone. And my third deployment will be the Hell Blaster squad behind my other infantry. And I've placed another plague marine squad pretty much opposite the other one on the other side of the board, so now a few there. And my next choice will be the scouts who use their concealed positions to deploy inside this area terrain. Next, I've deployed the Blight Hauler over here by the squad of plague marines by the crane. I've put the librarian down behind all my infantry in the middle. And I've placed one of my squads of ten poxwalkers here by these blade marines. And I've put the captain down next to my infantry. And there's another unit of poxwalkers here uh, on the middle of the board. In my deployment zone at the back. And I've put my last intercessor squad just to cover the rear of my formation. And I've put the malignant plague caster down over on this side with the uh, plague marines and the blight hauler. He's a bit further forward but I get to go first so I can adjust where he is relative to the space marines. And then I'm going to put the land speeder in amongst my infantry. And finally I've got my Chaos Spawn, I've put him down here in the centre with the uh, squad of Poxwalkers in the middle. And we've got our command point markers here, six each because we each have a battalion detachment, and yes, it should be eight, but the magazine put three command points for a battalion detachment rather than five as it's supposed to be. So we're going with magazine, we know it's wrong. But the Death Guard get to go first, so we'll be on to Death Guard turn one. So starting off my movement, the blade caster has moved out, he's just within 14 inches of the scout, so he'll be able to cast Curse of the Leper on them. Plague means with the plasma gun are around there, around the crane, and the blight holder has moved out to be within range of these ammo boxes over here. Then on the other side, the other squad of five plague marines have moved into this area cover, and then these pox walkers here will advance. They're going an extra six inches. They get to themselves to there. Now the chaos spawn will advance as well. It has a base move of seven inches, so this will be seven plus five, so twelve inches. And these pop walkers at the back are not going to move, they're going to stay where they are. Second line defence, and the plague burst crawler isn't going to move either, because it has heavy weapon. And at the end of the movement phase, Lord Gangrus is going to teleport himself down there by the blight hauler. With that, we'll be on to the psychic phase. The plague caster is within 14 inches of the scouts, and that is the range of Curse of the Leper, and it hits the closest unit. So we'll try and cast that first, it goes off on a 7. So we're on his psychic test, getting an 8, so that does go off. I'm not going to try and deny that because uh, it's only on five pluses you get mortal wounds. Rather try and deny smite. So uh, for this, so I roll seven d6, and for everyone that exceeds the scout's toughness characteristic of four, they take a mortal wound. So I'm looking for fives and sixes, getting two. Two of the snipers die. And now we'll just go for a smite because um, blades of future action are not useful at this point. So this goes off on a five. Going to eat with a ten. Yeah, well, I'll try and deny that. I'm going to need an eleven. No, oh, not quite. Nine. Oh, I'll re-roll one. Okay, well you've got the command points to use, so yeah, re-roll that three. Whee. Oh, you did, you got a twelve, so smite does not go off. Start the shooting phase with the Blight Hauler. It's going to fire a crack missile and its multi-melter at the land speeder. And we'll start with the multi-melter, it uh, is next to the ammo boxes, so fours re-rolling ones to hit. That's a hit, on six. Wounds on three. It did. Uh, no armor save because it's minus four, so just d6 damage. For six. Oh well. Oh. Uh, does it explode? No. no. But, uh, well, that's the land speeder destroyed. There's no first blood in this mission, there's no victory points. So, do the Plague Burst Crawler next. Uh, he's the only thing in range is his big mortar. I'm going to fire that at the aggressors at the front. So, heavy d6 for five. Hitting on fours, re rolling ones, because it is next to the ammo box. That's three hits. Wounding on threes, re rolling ones. Re rolling ones. That's two wounds. Yes, yeah. it's minus two. Nope. So d3 damage, so the first hit does 3, and the second hit does 1. So that's 1.5. So as a result of that, the closest to the rest of the camera is dead. 
And we've got its heavy slugger as well. I actually forgot to declare it, but it will shoot the aggressors because I didn't declare it was shooting anything else. Uh, and you have to shoot all your weapons. So hitting on fours. Uh, Rerolling the ones. Nope, two hits. Strength five, so we're on fours. That's a wound. AP minus one. Four plus. Nope. Oh, well, might as well try and save an aggressor. No, he's dead. No, it's a three. One down to the sergeant left. Uh, we'll do this squad of five plague marines down here. Flight launchers and the plasma gun will go at the aggressor sergeant, but the bolt guns can't see him, so they'll shoot the hell blasters instead. Do the blight launchers at the aggressor, so four shots on threes. They have all hit. Three on threes, three rolling ones. They've all wounded. Yep. Four, five plus armor saves. Oh, he made one, he's dead. No, he's dead. That's the aggressors down as well. And we've got two shots of bolt guns at the hell blasters on threes. That's a one hit and wounding on a four. That did. Three plus armor save. Yep. So Hell Blaster takes a wound. And that leaves finally this other squad of Plague Marines by the crane. They'll shoot everything at the Hell Blasters as well. Plasma guns are in range. I will supercharge because I've actually got quite a lot of command points to reroll them if it goes wrong. So uh, we'll start with the normal Plasma Gun Man. Two shots on threes. They both hit. And the champion gets a one. Um, so I'm going to reroll that with a command point. So down to five. Oh, it's a five. So four hits with supercharged Plasma Guns. Wounding on twos. Oh. So there's a six plus arm save for a hell blaster. Nope. So no. wounded man dies. Wounded man dies. Probably did this in the wrong order, but never mind. Then we've got three shots of bolt guns. On threes. So they will hit. And then fours. That's two. Three plus arm saves. Yeah. No, another dead hell blaster. Well, that is it for shooting and uh, the end of my, my turn because I'm not going to make any charges. So we're on to Space Marines turn one. So in movement phase, the scouts are going to stay where they are. Probably means they're never going to get off the board, but it doesn't matter. Uh, everyone else is just going to move up normally in a sort of a big blob, because we're probably going to need to charge something if we're going to hope to get anywhere. So we'll be on to the psychic phase. We're going to start off by trying to manifest Smite. It will hit the this Plague Green squad if it yep. does work. They're, they're slightly closer. They're the closest. So we need a five. Getting it with a five. Just about, but I'll try and deny it with the uh, Plague Caster. I uh, got a six, so that does stop it. Then I will attempt to manifest a veil of time on this intercessor squad in the front. Needing a six, getting it with an eleven. Right, so, so they now, can now reroll all advance and charge rolls. Yeah, and they count as fighting first in the fight phase, even if they didn't charge. In the shooting phase, the scouts are going to put all of their guns into the malignant plague caster. Yeah, he so, is closer, so. So the missile launcher will fire a crack missile, and then there's the two snipers. So I'll do the crack missile first, hitting on three, rerolling ones because of the ammo boxes, so that's a hit with a five. Wounding on a three. That's a wound. It's AP minus two, so this is a five plus armor save, which I have failed. D6 damage, two. I will reroll that. Okay. Because I want to, he's worth killing. Yep, down to three command points. Three. Well, better than two. Uh, disgustingly resilient. Made none of them, so he's actually down to one wound. Mm, down to one. And then the two snipers hitting on threes, rolling ones. Two hits. Hitting on fives. Oh, in the box. In the box. Uh, oh, oh, that's a wound and a mortal wound. Well, he takes a mortal wound to take the armor safe first, so he made his armor safe. But so we need to make this five plus. Oh, this is costing him resilient. No, but I'm actually going to try and I should have rerolled the armor save there. So you're rerolling it. No, Dan, that's right. a one. Uh, the plague caster goes down. Next shooting, the three remaining hell blasters are going to fire at the plague marine squad with the blight launchers. The two of them are in rapid fire range and one isn't, so I'll do these all separately. We've got, yeah, we're charging obviously. So Sarge, two shots hitting on threes, rolling ones, two hits. Hellblaster number two, no, Hellblaster number one, sorry. Blows up, but gets a hit. And the other guy gets a hit. So we've got four hits. Wounding on threes. Oh, well, they're all wounded. Okay, I'm in cover, so I do have a six plus armor save against their AP minus four. I've made one, so that's going to be. So, discussing resilient two at a time. First man dies. Second man, only the bolt guns obviously, dies. And then we're on to someone important who dies. So yeah, we'll take the two bolt guns away, and then I think we'll lose the bolt launcher at the back. Hellblaster blew up. Next up, this intercessor squad at the back are all within rapid fire range of this plasma gunner, so they're going to shoot at that squad. Ten shots hitting on threes, you're on ones. Eight hits. Wounding on fives. One. I get cover thanks to the blight hauler, so this is a three plus, which I've made. Next, I'll do the librarian. He's just within range of the same plasma gunner. So he's got one shot with his pistol, hitting on three. You're rolling ones because the captain hits. Wound you on five. Nope. And then the intercessor squad is going to shoot at the plague marines as well. Ten shots hitting on three. You're rolling ones. Eight hits as well. See if they can get more than one wound. Wound you on fives. 
They got one as well. Uh, armor save, three plus, yes. So in the charge phase, the intercessor squad is going to declare a charge against the plague marines. So we've got four plasma gun shots, but not going to supercharge. Hitting on sixes, that is two. Wounding on threes, that is one. Six plus armor save, new. So a wound so far, and then we've got six shots with bolt guns on sixes, that's one. Wounding on four, yep. Three plus armor save, no, so the intercessor on the end will die. Distance. Here's a four, and well, I've got a bit of time so I can re-roll that. I can re-roll both. An eight. That's probably enough. Next, the librarian is going to declare a charge on the same plague marine squad. Okay. He needs a twelve. He didn't get twelve. And then the other intercessor squad will do the same thing. They also need a twelve. Nope. So now the intercessors get to pile in. So we'll pile in like that, I guess. We brought the blight holder in. Here we've got nine attacks hitting on threes. Six hits. Wounding on fives. Oh, they're better with their fists than they are with their guns. Three plus armor saves, and I have made them. Then the Plague Marines will pile in like that, and I'm going to spend a command point to play Veterans of the Long War on them. Card down, that gives them plus one to wound for this phase. So down to three, and then we'll do the Power Fist first, hitting on fours. That's one hit, no, that's the False Emperor. And then wounding on twos, the Veterans doesn't help it here. Oh, that's one. And then we've got four whole attacks with Plague Knives, hitting on threes. That's only two hits. And wounding on the wounding on threes, thanks to uh, Veterans of the Long War. That's two wounds. Wow, there you go. The command point gave him an extra wound. And uh, three plus armor saves, okay. which I made. And uh, the Blight Holder gets to go as well. It has three attacks that hit on fours. One of them did. Wounds on a three. Rerolling ones, because it's got a plague mouth thing. No, one to one. So we're on to the morale phase, where these two plague marines over here lost three friends. So they have to take a morale test, which they will fail on a six. No, five, they're all right. And that is it for Space Marines turn one. On to Death Guard, turn two. And the first thing that happens at the beginning of my turn is that uh, these intercessors are within range of people who are affected by Lord Felthius' aura, so they might take mortal wounds. On four plus, they take a mortal wound. They do not. Uh, and then in my movement phase, the Blight Hauler has run away as quickly as possible. Plague Marines are going to stay in melee, and then Lord Gangris and the Chaos Spore have moved up to try and kill these intercessors. At the start of my movement phase, I actually played the Dead Walk again for a command point on this squad of Poxwalkers, so any infantry models killed within seven inches of them will give me more Poxwalkers. And then these Plague Marines over here will stay where they are, as will the squad of Poxwalkers at the back and the Plague Burst Crawler, and so we'll be on to the shooting phase. Start with the two remaining Plague Marines down here, and they will shoot at the Hell Blasters. We'll do the Blight Launcher first, hitting on threes, one hit, wounding on three, re-rolling ones, that's a wound. Five plus armor save. Nope. Um, so D3 damage. Three. Regular Hell Blaster dies. And the Plasma Gun will not supercharge, so two shots on threes. They have hit. They wound on threes. One of them wounds. Six plus. Nope. Sword is down to one wound. That leaves just the Plague Burst Crawler. It's going to put everything into the Scouts. We'll start with the Heavy Slugger. Four shots in on fours. On the box. Oh, that was a miss, so that's two hits. Nope, but the one I knocked over was actually a one, which you can reroll from the stammer box. So there's three hits in total. Wounding on threes. That's yeah, two wounds at AP minus one. But three plus armor saves. We're good. And Blade Burst Mortar, D6 shots, only two. Hitting on fours. Rerolling ones. One hit. Wounds on a two. It did. And minus two. Four plus. Yeah! Go Scouts. Shooting done, on to the charge phase. Lord Felthius will charge the intercessors. Uh, I'm not going to roll it because he just needs to go there. And the Chaos Spawn will join him. Uh, we'll do the Chaos Spawn first because we didn't get to see what it did in the previous game. And I think through its mutated beyond reason rule, it gets some bonus in the fight phase, which I have to roll now. So this is a D3, so that's a 2, which gives it an extra 2 attacks on top of the D6 it gets normally. So D6 attacks, oh, six. so 8 attacks. <laughs> He's only hit on 4, so. So, yeah, one. <laughs> Wounds on a three. No, it didn't. The intercessors get to fight next because they still have a veil of time yep. on them. So we'll put our attacks on the Plague Marines. Got nine attacks hitting on threes. Seven Let's hits. Let's get, get those, all those rolls again for wound, please. Wounding on fives. Four wounds uh, with no AP. So three plus armor. Oh, failed two. Disgustingly resilient. Failed one. Really? So that's a dead Plague Marine. Yeah. So this plague, this bolt gun Plague Marine here is within seven inches of the Pops Walkers. Well, I, then I get a bonus Pops Walker. Now we'll fight with Lord Gangrus, because he charged. Four attacks hitting on twos. 
Uh, that's a one, but Death Falls Emperor on that six, so four hits. Wounding on threes, re-rolling ones, Ooh, that's a two. Oh, oh only two blimey. wounds. Six plus armor saves. Oh, oh, double six. So untouchable intercessors so far. The Plague Marines are going to have a go now. Half is hitting on fours. The one hit. Wounding on a two. It did wound this time. Six plus... Oh, no, it didn't six. do this time. D3 damage. Uh, two. So that intercessor closest to Lord Gangrus has died, and that main target, another Poxwalker. Then three Plague Knives on threes. Uh, two hits. Fours. Nothing. And then Plague Marine Champion will consolidate there. Protect his Lord. But that is it for Death Guard turn two. Uh, no morale checks. The intercessors are at minus two leadership thanks to the Icon of Despair and the Chaos Spawn, but they have leadership nine, so they're just about right. So we'll be on to the Space Marines turn two. So my movement phase, the uh, brave intercessor squad has fallen back. We'll just shift slightly so we get cover from the uh, crane. Uh, everyone else in the middle has just kind of moved up in a big blob. He'll blast the sergeants, hopefully out of line of sight of the Plague Marines in the corner. And the scouts are going to stay where they are, bravely holding down the rear. So in the psychic phase, uh, we're going to start off with Smite. It will hit the Chaos Spawn, because it's the closest unit. You get five, getting it with a nine. Well, my psychic is dead. Yeah, so D3, more wounds to the Spawn. Three. Mm, not bad. And down to one. It doesn't have to discuss the resilient, unfortunately. Yeah, and then we'll try to manifest a veil of time on the Captain and Gravis armor. Getting it with an eight. No, the Captain has veil of time. So we're on to the shooting phase. So we'll start with the Captain. He's going to fire his Bolt Storm Gauntlet at the Chaos Spawn. Try and get rid of it. Three shots hitting on twos, you're rolling ones. Two hits, wounding on fives. Two wounds. Oh, five plus armor save, I think. Yep. Well, right, definitely on a four. Yeah. So the Chaos Spawn goes down. Next I'll do this Intercessor Squad. The full squad is going to fire at the Chaos Marines. Uh, Sarge is definitely within six, so he'll throw a crack grenade. So crack grenade hitting on three, you're rolling ones. Hits, wounding on a three. Wounds. Don't have cover, so this is a four plus. Which I failed. D3 damage, three. And disgusting here, isn't it? No, that's a dead Chaos Marine. So the Bolt Gun Man all the way over here goes down. And a Pox Walker appears over here, because the Dead Walk again is still in effect. And then we've got eight Bolt Rifle shots. He's got threes, you're only ones. They will hit. Moving on fives. Two wounds this time. Four plus armor. Failed one. Disgustingly resilient. No, it's another Plague Marine dead. Uh, I'm going to lose the Icon of Despair, and another Poxwalker has arrived as well. I'll do this squad of intercessors that fell back. Sarge will throw a crack grenade, and the other two will fire their bolt rifles at the Plague Marine squad. Got a crack grenade hitting on four. Nope. Four bolt rifles hitting on fours. Two hits. Wounding on fives. Nope. I'll do the Hellblaster Sergeant next. He's going to overcharge at the two Plague Marines. He's got two shots hitting on threes, we're rolling ones. That's two hits. Wounding on threes. That's one wound. Minus 4 AP, so 2 damage, disgustingly resilient. Yeah, that's another one dead. So the Plasma Gunner has gone down, but he's been replaced by a Poxwalker, who is now in the way. Next, the Librarian is going to throw a crack grenade at the Plague Champion. One shot hitting on three, rolling ones. He hits, wounding on three, he wounds. Uh, 4 plus armor save, yes. Finally, I'll do the Scouts. Uh, two snipers will shoot a Gangrus, might get a mortal wound, and then the Missile Launcher will fire a crack missile at the Plague Champion. So, missile Launcher. Yes. Hitting on threes, rolling ones, hits. Uh, doesn't wound. And the two snipers, rolling ones, two hits, fives. Oh, mortal wound. That's a mortal wound on a six. Uh, and well, he's armor save as well, so two plus armor. Which he made just. And then disgusting he was in it for the mortal wound. Oh, he made it. So the intercessor squad here will declare a charge on the plague champion and the poxwalkers. Overwatch with a non supercharged plasma gun on sixes, nothing. And I'll charge. It's a seven, that's gonna be enough. So you finished our charge like that. Leaving a hole there. And next the captain will declare a charge on Gangrus, the Plague Marine and the Poxwalkers. So, gonna reroll that. Fail time. Well, it's okay. probably not enough. It's just gonna be enough that when he piles in, he'll be able to get within an inch of Gangrus. And then finally, uh, the librarian will declare a charge on the Plague Champion and Gangrus as well. <sighs> 10. Ooh, probably Ten. enough. Yeah. yeah. There so we go. He comes there like that. In case you think about heroically intervening out of the way. Yeah. So the captain's going to pile in like that. that. I mean, he's, his model physically pushes people out of the way, but his base definitely fits in. Just adjust people. And he's, def he's definitely within an inch of Gangrus. Yep. So we've got five attacks with the captain. I'm going to spend a command point for Death to the Traitors. So uh, this will activate because we get minus one to hit from our bolts from Gaul, but a uh, plus one to hit from Champion of Humanity. So on sixes again, extra attack. So five attacks hitting on twos. You're rolling ones. So that's five hits plus an extra attack. Plus the extra attack. That rerolls. 
He goes ones there. There you go, six hits. Wounding on twos, because it's we're strength eight, so we get plus one to wound. He'll wound. He'll wound. These are four plus invulnerable saves. Which I have made three of, which is perfectly average. Yep. 3d3 damage. Uh, that'll be six. So that's enough unless I make one of these disgusting resilience. I've made one of those disgusting Sorry. resilience. He's down to one wound. Could interrupt, but I'm going to risk it. We're not going to do it. I'll do the librarian next. He's going to put all of his attacks on Gangrus. Four attacks hitting on threes, rolling ones. They will hit. Right. Wounding on fives. One wound. That's one. Four plus invulnerable save. Oh no! I've got to be, I've got to spend a command point. Four plus. Phew. No, you're right. <laughs> and then the intercessors are going to go. Oh, they get to pile in. So these guys will just come down the box. And the four regular dudes will put their attacks on the Poxwalkers, and the sergeant will attack the plague champion. Sarge sees three attacks. Hitting on threes, running ones. Two hits. Hitting on fives. Two wounds. Uh, armor saves. Uh, Fail one. Disgusting using it on the plague champion. Oh, he lives. And eight attacks on the Poxwalkers, hitting on threes, running ones. Seven hits. Wounding on threes. Oh, no, two. Not so good. They have disgusting using it. But they have failed both, so two Poxwalkers go down. Well, obviously take them from over here all the way back. All right, well, we'll go with the Lord Gangrus. Probably make more sense to attack the Librarian, because he's got a much better chance of killing him, but we're going to attack the Captain, because it's better that way. Four attacks, hitting on twos. They all hit. So Winning on threes. Rerolling ones. That's Ooh. only two wounds. So I need to make one of these four plus invulnerable saves. I made one, so I'm down to three wounds. Actually, we'll do the Poxwalkers next, because they can only attack the Intercessors. Well, they could attack the Captain, but I'm not going to bother. They'll pile in like so. There are actually more than 10 of them now, thanks to Deadwalk again, so they get plus one to hit. So we've got 24 attacks, I'll do two batches of 12, so first slot hitting on fours. That's uh, six hits so far. Uh, I'll do these wounds first, so the first six wounds on fives. Uh, one so far, and then I'll do the next 12 attacks, hitting on fours. Another six. Also wounds on fives. Nothing. One and an armor save. Three plus. Made it. Finally, we've got the Blade Champion. I think he'll go for the Librarian. Two attacks, hitting on fours. No, oh, they both missed. That's it for the fight phase. In the morale phase, the play champion has lost three models this turn, so he will have to take a morale chest. He will fail on a six. He failed on a six. Oh. So he's going to run away. He runs away. He does not turn into a box walker because he was he ran away. He wasn't slain. And will be on to death guard turn three. At the start of my turn, Lord Gangrus goes up two wounds thanks to his warlord trait. And then his aura will go off as well, so the intercessors, the captain, and the librarian are all within an inch of death guard units, so they might take more to wound. And we'll do the librarian. He does on a four plus. The captain does, that's a five. And the intercessors also do, that's also a five. Yeah. Uh, my group is pretty simple. Lord Gangrus has fallen back from melee, because uh, he's the cunning one, remember. Not Lord Felthius is the foolhardy one who rushes into combat. And um, the light hauler has come up here to try and hopefully melt the librarian. And over here, these two plague marines have moved out so they can see the the Hellpaster Sergeant. And over here, this uh, other squad of Poxwalkers and the Plague Ghost Crawler will stay stationary. So we'll be on to the shooting things. We'll do these two plague marines, they only have one target they can see. Well, I could probably see the scouts technically, but they're going to shoot the Hellblaster Sergeant. Light launcher first, hitting on threes. Two hits, wounding on threes, three rolling ones. Oh, double two! Oh, the dreaded double two. Plasma gun, not supercharged, he's only got one wound left. Ah, uh, miss. Well, uh, sorry, one, hit. one hit. Yes, is what I mean. We got one hit. Wound on a three. That's a wound. Six plus. Oh, oh the six. The emperor protects. Uh, we'll do the blight hauler next. He's going to fire his multi melter and the crack missile at the librarian oh, and the bile spurt as well. So crack missile hitting on two on a four. It hit. Wounds on a two. That's a wound. He can minus two. Five plus. You. So d6 damage for three. Add one. Add one. We'll leave the melter gun on four. That hit. Wounds on two. That's a wound. Yeah. Yeah, that's four. So the librarian goes down. Uh, that leaves the plague burst crawler. Shoot the heavy slugger at the hellblaster sergeant and the mortar at the three intercessors over by the crane. Mm. Heavy slugger at the hellblaster sergeant. Hitting on fours. Wow, okay, that's four hits. Mm. Wounding on threes. That's three, four, uh, four wounds. Uh, you've got cover from an ammo box. Oh, oh, three times. Reroll it. What? Yes! Yeah, there we go. How our sergeant lives? Plague burst mortar, d6 shots at the intercessors. Oh, six. Oof. Hitting on fours, re-rolling ones. That's oh, wait. three hits so far. Four hits. Wounding on twos. Re-rolling ones, because it's a plague weapon. That's four wounds on their intercessors. They do have cover from the crane, however. Four plus on. Oh, mate, three, two, two, and they'll live. 
So D3 damage each, the first one. Oh, only one, so it kills one intercessor. And a two. So that's all my shooting, on to the charge phase, where the Blight Horde will charge the Captain and the Intercessor squad who are already engaged in melee. Now I've watched so his charge, the charges, so it was ten, it's plenty. So it comes in like that, and it's going to try and bite the Captain. Three attacks hitting on fours, one hit, wounding on three, strength six, that's a wound. AP minus four, two. one of invulnerable save, new. No. Yeah, there's a wound on the Captain. Oh, I might as well re-roll it, because I can't use it uh, only until death as duty ends, so I might as well try and save my wound. There we go. There we go, so the Captain is alright. So, so now the captain gets to go because he's still got a bit of time. And I'm going to attack the Poxwalkers because uh, that's not a threat anymore. And I can just punch it next turn. Yeah. Possibly for the first time ever, I'm going to use the Mastercraft Power Sword rather than the Box Form Golder. So we've got five attacks hitting on two zero ones. ones. So five hits. Wounding on threes. Four wounds. And these are two damage flat each, so disgusting resilient twice, four times. One dead. Two dead. Three dead. Four dead pot swappers. Uh, we'll take these guys off the rear. So that's those four. And now it's my turn to pick, so we'll do pot swappers and they're gonna put all their attacks on the intercessors, but there are now fewer than ten of them, so they won't get this one to hit. We've got 18 attacks hitting on five. Three hits. Yep. Wounding on fives. Oh I've got a wound at least. Three plus arm oh, save. Yep. So Sarge has to fight the Blight Hauler, and the others are going to put their attacks on the Pox Hawkers. Watch hitting on threes, you're rolling ones. Uh, yeah, so there's a Sarge, sorry, yeah. Two hits. Yeah, on the Blight Hauler, winning on fives. There's a wound. Three plus arm save. No, it's fine. We've got eight attacks on the Pox Hawkers, hitting on threes. You're rolling ones. Seven hits. Wounding on threes. We've got five. Disgustingly resilient. Made one, so another four Pox Walkers. So, one, two, three. Well, that's it for Death Guard turn three. On to Space Marines turn three. Still the Space Marine turn, Lord Gangrus regains another wound, so he's back up to three. So, in my movement phase, Hellblaster Silence is going to turn to point his gun at those Space Marines. This Intercessor squad is going to advance, everyone else is going to stay where they are. I don't think we'll have the, quite have the time to get off the board at this rate, because you can see just how far we've gone so far. Will the advancing Intercessor squad get to go an extra five? Yeah, so they end up there. I'll do the Hellblaster Sergeant. He's going to overcharge at the two Blade Marines. So we've got two shots hitting on threes, you're on ones. We're rolling that one. Phew, didn't kill himself. Two hits, wounding on threes. Two wounds. He's going straight through their armour, so just got to use it twice. That's, that's of course. just not going to stay there. But there, there's one dead, and two dead. That's the Blade Marines done. So I'll do the Intercessor squad next. They're going to fire all their pistols at the Poxwalkers. Five shots hitting on threes, you're on ones. Five hits, wounding on threes. Four wounds. Uh, disgusting was in it. Made two. Two more die. Take away that one in there. This one. Oh. So the captain can't shoot. Ooh. So now the captain can't shoot the pox walkers because they're not within an inch of him. So he has to shoot at the uh, the mind my, my blight hauler. So you've got three shots hitting on twos. You're rolling ones. They will hit. Wounding on fives. It's one wound. Three plus armor save. Made it. So we've got the scouts. The two snipers will shoot a gangrus. Uh, missile launcher will fire a crack missile at the plate burst crawler. Missile launcher hitting on three rolling ones. Hits. Wounded on a four. It's tough as eight. Wounded on a four. Wounded. Five plus armor said. Five plus armor will either way. Nope. Uh, yeah, I'll re roll that with my last command point. Yeah, it made you safe. Yeah. And then the two snipers shooting at Gangrus. Get one hit. That doesn't wound. Then in the fight phase, the captain will attack the Blight Hauler with his power fist. Four or five attacks hitting on threes, re rolling ones. Four hits, wounding on threes. That's three wounds. Minus three, but it has a five plus one will save. Well, I'll make two of them. D three damage. Three. Discuss the news in it. It takes two. It's down to six. Uh, it's my turn to pick, so I'll do the three pox walkers before they get um, killed. Uh, six attacks heeding on four or fives, rather. Two hits. And one wound. Three plus. Made it. Intercessors get to fight back, so Sarge has to fight the Blight Hauler and the others get to fight the Pox Walkers. So Sarge attacking the Blight Hauler, gets three hits, wounding on fives, doesn't get any wounds. Eight attacks on the Pox Walkers, hitting on threes, rolling ones, seven hits, wounding on threes, four wounds. Disgustingly resilient. Made none of them, so the Pox Walkers go down. So the Intercessors will consolidate to get a little bit more distance. Well, stop you getting to the captain. Uh, that's going to be it for Space Marines turn three. On to Death Guard turn four. Lord Gangrus gains a wound, back up to back up to four now, and then these the captain and these intercessors might take mortal wounds because the blight holder is close enough to Gangrus. So uh, the captain 
takes a mortal wound, or four plus obviously, and the intercessors also take a mortal wound. So wound man dies, captain goes down to one wound. Then the only movement, well Lord Gangrus is going to move up a little bit so he can get within unfavourable charge range. And Plague Burst Crawler is moved over there to deploy its Plague Spitters on those two intercessors. And the Blight Orbs can stay in rally. On the shooting phase, Plague Burst Crawler will shoot its Plague Spitters at those two intercessors, and then the other two guns will shoot at the scouts. With the Plague Spitters, get D6 shots each, these are the same as the guns on the Loach Drone. Uh, so 2D6 hits, that's 7. They are Strength User, which for the Plague Burst Crawler is 7. So, well, winning on 3s anyway, re-rolling 1s. Oh, that's 4 2s, so I can't just kill them. So that's three, four plus armor saves? Yeah, it's minus one. Oh, take so one wound. They can take a wound. Now we've got four shots of the heavy slugger. He's hit on fives now because it's a heavy weapon. This is the Hellblaster Sergeant. Uh, this is the Scouts. Uh, re-rolling this one because it's ammo boxes. Oh, two hits. Wounding on threes. That's two wounds. Maybe minus one. Uh, three plus arm saves. Made both. And Plague Burst Mortar. D6 shots. Four. Maybe on fives. Re-rolling ones. That's one hit. Wounds on a two. Mm, re-rolling ones because it's a plague weapon. That's a wound. Four plus. Yes, go can't, scouts. Cannot kill the scouts. In the charge phase, Lord Gangrus will charge into. I might as well declare both as a charge target. I don't think I can actually get within an inch of the captain. No. Nah, I won't be able to in there. But And Plague Burst Crawler is actually going to charge those two intercessors to try and hold them up. I know what's the crack grenade in my bolt rifle, so crack grenade. Hits. Who's on a five? You. Bolt rifle. Gets a hit as well. Who's on a five? Nope. And it's charge distance. Yeah, eight is plenty. So it will drive around like that. And then in the fight phase, Lord Gangrus will strike first. Uh, he, yeah, he can't hit the captain because he's not in an inch. So four attacks on the intercessors. Twos, Ooh, double six. So four hits so far. Six hits. Wounding on threes, three rolling ones. Ooh, two ones. Roll one correctly. Right, no, five wounds on the intercessors. Five, six plus armor saves. Oh, you made three of them. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's a six. Yeah. Oh, I guess we'll take away these two. Uh, the Plague Burst Crawler, three attacks here on sixes on the intercessors. Oh, there's a hit. Wounds on three because it's strength seven. Oh, it didn't. Now I get to pick and Blight Hauler will attack the captain who's on one wound. Yeah. Three attacks on fours. Oh, two hits this time. Wounding on threes. Oh, two wounds. Four plus. Nope, he's dead. No, not a heroic end, just gets eaten by a machine. Got five attacks on the Blight Hauler. Threes. Yeah, we've been demoralised by the death of the captain. But we wounded it twice. Oh. <laughs> Uh, oh, it takes a wound. Oh, no, disgusting was in it. Yeah, it does. It takes a wound. Yeah, down five. to five. Five attacks on the Plague Burst Crawler. Hit it on threes. Three hits. Wounding on fives. So six, 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 on sixes. Sixes. Couple eight. And, you. and that'll be it for Death Guard turn four. On Space Marines turn four. At the start of the turn, Gangrus goes up to five wounds. So these intercessors are just going to fall back from that. And now the other two intercessors are going to fall back to there. And uh, we're just going to see if we can kill one of those two. Slight adjustment at the end of the moon phase, so we're closer to Gangrus. So we'll throw a grenade and a bolt rifle. Crack grenade, hitting on a four, we're rolling ones. Hits, moves on a three. It does. Three plus. No. D3 damage. One. Oh. Disgusting, he was in it. Oh, I made it. And bolt rifle, gets a hit. That doesn't wound. The Hell Blaster Sergeant will overcharge at him. Two shots hitting on threes, rolling ones. Two hits, moving on threes. Oh. And finally, the scouts. Missile launch will fire at the blow hauler. Two snipers will fire at Gangrus. Missile launcher hits. Wounds. Oh, five plus. Oh, no. Snipers. You're rolling ones. Get two hits. Oh. No. No wounds. Yeah, that'll be it. I'm going to concede at that point. I mean, I technically have 24 power on the board. So six, eight for the Hell Blaster, five and five. But only one of those units might realistically get off the board in time. And Gangrus will be at full wounds. And yeah. two big vehicles. Yep, so that'll be it. A Death Guard victory. And we'll recap all of that for you now. So that was the mission from issue 73 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. How do you think that went? Better than I thought it was going to go after the first turn. Yeah, I think that's fair. fair. But uh, I think it's a really tough... It's just because of the sheer distance you have to cover. Even with six turns, you still need to make several advances and several charges. And kind of the problem really is that when deciding with the forces you take, you've got stuff that is fast like the land speeder and the interceptors and the bikes, but they're just not durable enough or they don't have the firepower to punch a hole through the Death Guard lines. And your other units that can punch a hole through the Death Guard lines are too slow to really get across the board in time. 
Well, you've got to go 51 inches. And yeah. um, and the Death Guard gets to go first. And so you just get shot to bits in the first turn. We could have put some cover for the Space Marines on the road. And that doesn't really seem to fit if it's, there, if it's a convoy. I suppose it is technically possible. You could take the Inceptors and the Terminator Captain and deep strike them in, in the corner and hope the Death Guard player gets there there and then just move them off the board. I mean, they'll know you have those in your army. Well, that was another reason for including two big units of Poxwalkers in my army, is I could have, if you'd been taking units that could deploy in my back lines, yeah. I would have just spread them out a bit to deny you all the space. The other thing as well is I didn't play particularly canny. I could have sat a lot further back. I didn't have to come out and meet you. I yeah. could have made you run a lot further under heavy fire without um, that getting too close. I mean, you did manage to see off my Plague Marine scores without too much difficulty. Yeah. They did a bit of damage. Nearly got gangrenous. Yeah, you nearly did. He, he decided to run away. Mm. Managed and to live. Managed to live. Yeah, but I mean, well, I think as well, like stuff like the scouts killing off your Plague Caster was pretty important early on. I, it was a calculated risk to send him after them. I hoped he would kill more. Well, you, you denied my smite yeah, with a 12. Just. So this scenario is actually based on one from the main rulebook. This is uh, Crucible of War Ambush. It's on page 198 if you have the core cool rulebook, which is similar, but in that one, the defenders deploy halfway onto the map, not a third of the way. Mm. So you've got far less distance to go. There are some slight differences, like the defender sets up a load of markers for their units, and then the attacker doesn't get to see their deployment mm. and things like that. The attackers can wrap round all the way to the far end of the board, but that's probably not going to matter huge. Hugely, but um, broadly speaking, it, that mission seems to be a bit better balanced. Well, I think the distance is the main factor. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see too many of the new stratagems. Uh, we did try. I did keep two back to use um, only in Death's duty end, but then he shot my help blaster sergeant, and there was a chance he would live. And you kept one back for Chaos Boon. Well, I had a choice to attack a librarian at one mm. point with Gangrus, but I decided to go for the captain instead because it was more cinematic. Had I been able to play Chaos Boon, I would have. But hey, we've got a few more, some more games to come, so. Yeah, I mean, I suppose we might as well just talk about the stratagems we got in general. I guess we'll start with the Space Marine ones, because they're a lot... I'd say they're all fairly situational. So as we said, we've got Orbital Bombardment, three command points for something that might not do anything at all. I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest. You might roll a one for its range. Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't seem worth it, especially if you're playing with a magazine, you've only got a maximum of six command points. Spending half of them doesn't really seem worth it. And other than that, we've got Flak Missile. So the only uh, Adeptus Astartes infantry model we have with a missile launcher is the Scout with a missile launcher. And if you didn't build him, can't use Flak Missile. Um, and the only flying unit the Death God Hub is the Bloat Drone. It's not a bad stratagem, I would say. Well, in, with the magazine, it's probably not going to come up too much. But you might be yeah. able to use it to finish off a damage flyer. And there's Ospec Scan. Again, against Death Guard, that's only going to be Terminators, so you might put them off trying to charge uh, something like Hell Blasters from Reserve. Yeah, and the thing is, they're so slow that you don't want to put them more than 12 inches away yeah, from things most the of the time. Nine inches is bad enough. If you fail your charge, the enemy's just going to run away from them, but 12 inches away to avoid being shot. Is it worth it? I mean, again, it's you're relying on your opponent to make the move for you. And then we've got Tactical Flexibility. Very, very situational. Um, the two instances I could think of for using this were if you had a 10-man unit of intercessors and you wanted to go after two objectives at once, you could split them in half. Or say you were, you could get a 10-man intercessor squad into charge range with either the Plague Burst Crawler or the Myphysic Blight Hauler. You could split them into two squads of five and then try and charge both. And you might as well just combat squad them at the start of the game anyway, if you're going to combat squad them. The funny is, only in Death's Duty ends, probably the best one out of the one these ones were given. I mean, in that game, if Gangrus had killed my captain, I would have used it and then tried to punch you from beyond the grave. Yeah, and it might well have actually got rid of him yeah. as well. Or you could have done the same with the librarian if you yeah. killed the librarian. I mean, it's not it's not ideal to have your characters die, but I mean, it's you can take somebody with you. Again, it's not a strategy you'd build your army or strategy yeah. around. It's a kind of it's not what I'd call like a sort of positive strategy. There are plenty of strategies where you say, "All right, I'm going to include this unit and I'm going to give this character this thing, and then that will stack nicely with this strategy, so I can pull off a good combo at some point." That's what I'd call a positive yeah. kind of strategy. Whereas this, this is this is if your character gets killed. It's not something you plan to happen, if you know what I mean. That's not usually what you want to do with Space Marines because they're quite expensive and you don't want to throw characters yeah, away. Yeah, and they're usually of so, useful auras that you want for the rest of your army. And then for the Death Guard, obviously we have Noble's Rot. It's a bit better than Orbital Bombardment. It's a bit more reliable, but you have to have a character in the midst of things and then spend three command points. I mean, it's D3 Mortal Wounds, but it only happens on the 4+. Plus, yeah, so. but it does at least have a 7-inch range yeah, and, you, so can, and you can you can move. But I didn't want to keep three command points just to use that. I wanted to probably yes, three and it's off. too expensive. We saw Veterans of the Long War. It can work a lot better than it did. Yeah, I mean, it, Plague Marines in shooting, the Bolt Guns get plus one to wound, the Blight Launchers get plus one to wound. You're shooting mm. at the Dreadnought, for example, you're suddenly not wounding it on fives. Yeah, so 
can Moon make off. a Plague Marine damage to Dreadnought. And it also obviously works well for the Terminators, for example, with their melee weapons, because their Aura of Rust would activate yeah. on five or six. It's also good if you stack it with something like Blades of Putrefaction, yeah. which gives them plus one to wound uh, with melee weapons, and then if they're Plague weapons, they do mortal wounds as well, so it increases the number on yeah, which so that I mean, happens. You'd, you'll be, what, wounding on twos and mortal wounds on a five or a six, nice. and re-rolling ones with Plague Knives, so it's yeah. pretty good. It only works on infantry, so you can't make your vehicles better yeah, with it. But, I mean, uh, technically it works on Pox Augers as well. Because yeah, it just has Death Guard infantry in it, especially if the Pox Augers have buffs from elsewhere. The Grandfather's Blessings, potentially would have used that if I had the command points to heal Gangrus up, or indeed heal the Playcaster had you not killed him in one round shooting. It may or may not be useful. Again, it's a bit like the Space Marine one. If your character gets wounded, you can make them last longer, or might not be worth the two command points. Depends what the situation well, of the depend- game is, I suppose. It really. depends what infantry unit you're bringing back, because I mean, you can bring back a Terminator with that. If, I, if you had a character sitting on an objective or a unit sitting on an objective and you needed to keep them alive, maybe. Then we've got Blight Bombardment. Uh, we didn't get to see that. Well, this is your example of a positive strategy. You take this if you're taking the... Um... Biologus Putrefy. Yes. Because he buffs their grenades. So they can all throw improved grenades and then you can also stack that with things like Veterans of the Long War plus one to wound. So yeah, that's the thing. You build a unit or group of units around that and then spend the command points when it seems appropriate. Full, full 10-man unit Plague Marines all throwing grenades can be pretty nasty. So we'll see that hopefully in a future episode. And finally, uh, Chaos Boom, which is just for fun, really. Yeah. I mean, it's a random roll on the table. You may not get something useful. There are a few results that would be useful for certain characters. I mean... Well, plus one towards saving throws. So that also implies to, applies to invulnerable saves. So you have a three plus invulnerable save on a Lord of Contagion. Realistically, it's probably only the Lord of Contagion. Maybe the Plague Caster and the Surgeon, who might actually kill a character or vehicle in melee. Some of this stuff would be good for the Foul Blight Spawn, like plus six inches to gun range. Yeah, and basically that result would be pretty useless for um, yeah, for Lord of Contagion. For Lord of Contagion has no ranged weapons, so it's a bit random. You roll a seven, you get to pick what bonus you want, so that's the most likely option, I suppose. On a two, you t- turns to a chaos spawn, and your character dies. Which yes, if they are the warlord, then that is a victory point yeah, for slain warlord because it, it is say slain, and you get chaos spawn if you have one available. It's not a great trade off. On a twelve, you get a demon prince instead, but your character is still slain, and you don't get a demon prince with the magazine. Yes, yeah, so, so um, in, in with the magazine, it, it, they are just slain. Oh, going to be even worse. I would use it if the situation arose because it's fun. I mean, it's yeah. it's very it's characterful for chaos, but it is random, so you so you can improve your characters. Anyway, so yeah, hopefully we'll see more of those in games to come. Uh, we've got more well, available. I can imagine we'll certainly see the Death Guard ones. Yeah, the Death Guard ones got some tasty ones. The Space Marine ones, we might see some of them in the same way that we occasionally see some of the previous five we got for the Space Marines. Yeah. Oh, and I suppose again. These are the strategies from the old codex. If you buy the Space Marine yeah. Codex that has now been out for seven months, maybe, uh, you won't find some of these, or, you, or they're different or better or whatever, because for some reason they still insist on giving us old, outdated rules. We've moaned about it before, so I'm not going to bother yeah. doing it now, but yeah, um, just so, so you know. Apparently the magazine has just started in Germany, if they do carry on with this old rules, because I mean, it's going to be like a year and a half that the new codex has been out by the time you get to these, so it'd be interesting to see if they actually use the updated Anyway, I think that's all we have to say for this mission. So if you liked this game, then please leave a like on the video and subscribe for more. Uh, Leave any comments you have about this mission, about stratagems, gameplay, whatever. Uh, But until then, we've been the Tabletop Donkeys, and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, bye for now.